Hello and welcome to Paxton Road TV. This is a Paxton Road TV special and we are discussing our potential 99% or 99.9% .9 confirmed manager, Paolo Fonseca. And I'm joined today by some super special guests in the house. Mike Hotspur, Hustler, Darius 3K, Sid Spurs. We also shy Tottenham away, the Irish Hotspur and Kieran from Let's Talk Spurs. So... Gentlemen, ah, oh, before we start, like, subscribe, share, comment, please, if you can, ensure you share this comment around. We can't do this without you. Please like as well. Put some comments in the comment section and we'll try and get all your comments up on screen where possible. Ah, this could be a good one. This could be very, very, very interesting. Anyway, let's get into this. Um, I'll just talk about this. Paolo Fonseca. Um, before I just... Well, three or four weeks ago, I'd heard the name, didn't know much about him. We were talking about Conte, we were talking about Poch, we we're talking about Ten Hag. I'm glad we're no longer talking about people like Graham Potter and bloody, who else is it? Roberto Martinez. However, they may come back into the picture depending on how this deal goes. But we are primed now for a new manager. Our new manager, potentially, as I said, 99% certain if you look at the betting, if you look at all the talk that's going around, is likely to be the ex-Roma manager, Paolo Fonseca. And it appears now we've just done a swap deal with Roma. We've given them Jose and we've taken on their manager. What is this all about? And I'm going to come. <laughs> Firstly, I like to start with Mike, but I'm not going to do that because, Mike, I don't want to put you in that spot sh spotlight first. I'm going to come to Darius first. Is this an inspired choice or is this a desperate move on Spurs' behalf? You start the rolling ball. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not inspired. I think we can all agree on that one. It's definitely not inspired. But is it the worst choice? No. Is it a good choice? I don't know. And that's the problem. I I don't know what to expect from, from Paolo Fonseca. You you can do as much research as you like. You can watch uh, watch as many videos as you like on his, his style of play, what he's going to do. You know that he's gonna he's a possession-based man. He likes to play four at the back. He did play three at the back last year at Roma, but that's because Roma were absolutely awful. They, their squad was awful. Their injury uh, look was awful. So you kind of had to adapt. But for me, it's just kind of taking a stab in the unknown and, and hearing that he's not bringing his staff along and, and there's certain... Certain things that he kind of has to have heard the Guardian said something like he has to sort of deal within the realms of the squad that are, that are currently there. It's like these things don't really sound promising to me. But I have to admit, the way that Paratici's approach this is is what gives me a little bit of promise and makes me think, OK, maybe maybe this could be OK. Because, I mean, 50 days before we couldn't find a manager, we couldn't make our I couldn't make our minds up. As soon as he comes in, he chooses a target and that target seems to be on its on his way here. So... There's there's positives and negatives. I think the football side of things, the way he plays, will be will be a definite positive. I think he definitely likes to play with possession. He likes to attack. He really doesn't like defending as the main thing. But again, you take that from you take from that what you want. That that might mean that we might play very naive and and the big teams who are slightly more pragmatic might break us down and, and pick us apart. So the, you have to look at it um, from what you want from the club, what you want from from the football you see, and then. There'll be positives and negatives, but for me, it's I'm not too angry, but at the same time, it's not inspiring, like you said. So I'm kind of just waiting to see. I'm not going to make any judgments yet. I'm going to wait to see after the transfers, after maybe the first few games, and then you can really see what 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 Tottenham are going to be like next season. Cool. I'm going to go downstairs. So I'm going to go downstairs and upstairs, and I'm going to get all your thoughts. So I'm going to come down to the Irish Hotspur. I can see his deadpan face there. I know what's coming next. But anyway, I'm going to let him say what he wants to say. Mr. Irish Hotspur, is this an inspired choice or is this a desperate move on Spurs' behalf? Or indeed, is it something else? No, look, you can cut out that inspired choice. It's not one of them anyway. It's, it stinks of desperation. Look, the only reason why this guy is coming in is because he's going to do what Daniel Levy wants him to do. He's another yes man. He's not bringing any staff. It's the cheapest deal possible on the market. He's like He was like sixth or seventh choice on the list. Look, people can sit here and say... You know, that um, it's Paratici's move. Paratici was only brought in as well to exploit the free market like he did at Juve. Okay, people can sit here and say that's a great thing, but it's not. We don't pay the wages that Juve pay. We don't have the pull that Juve have. You know, so all in all, I, I just don't see this working out. The rebuild is going to be done on a lot of free players exploiting the market where you have players with one, years left, one year left on the contract, this, that, and the other. But I just can't see it working out the way... 
the way some fans are envisaging. Um, because, like I said, we don't have the pull that Juve had. We don't have the um, we don't pay the wages and the money that Juve do. Um, uh, back to uh, Francesco or Fon- Fonseca or Fondly, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Look, the guy. I- I'm not being funny, right? As soon as I seen the name, you know, I had to Google him. And when you have to Google a manager, it's never ever a good sign. Never a good sign. And for me, I'm definitely not inspired by him. Look, people can go on, you know. Look, even the fan base is Spursy right now because, you know, no one knows about him, right? But then everyone's there putting out the latest thing to try and convince each other on this guy. That's just Spursy down to the core. We had Conte sitting at the table. You give the man what he wants. When you have someone like that coming to the table, when you're in Europa Conference League, you know, you give the man what he wants and let him go and do the rebuild. Everything that's happening right now is just screaming that, you know, Daniel Levy has his next fall guy in place with Paratici. If it doesn't work, if the if Fonseca doesn't work out, Paratici will take the fall instead of Daniel Levy. And I know people are sick of, sick of hearing this, but it's not as this isn't going to work out as good as people think it is. I really don't think so. I do think, you know, that um, you know, ultimately within a year we're going to be rebuilding the structure. You know, if this guy is the answer and the board truly believe him and then Paratici truly believe in him, why is he only getting a two year contract? My thinking is, is that maybe the two-year contract is to buy time until Poch has finished that PSG. That's my thinking on it. Um, but honestly, it's not inspiring what, whatsoever. You know, famous words from Danny Rose, you know, we're starting to bring in people that we have to Google. You know, it was there two years ago, Danny Rose was telling us, and now we're getting a manager that nobody, like, look, maybe there's a few in the football and but honestly, a lot of people had to Google him and they're sitting there jacking off over this guy because he has a fancy foreign name. He has a, he wears a Zorro mask and he wears skinny jeans. And that's why people are all <laughs> over this guy. You know, honestly, it's a joke. It's a joke. Daniel Levy has pulled a massive, massive trick here. He's pulled the best magic trick. You know, he went to Harry Potter, spoke to him, got inspired and says, right, this is the trick I'm going to pull off. You know, and it's worked. It's worked. We're all up. We're like... The reason why it's worked is because we've been waiting so long for a manager. Honestly, you could put me in charge and the fan base would have been an uproar. They would have been loving it. Scream the Irish Hotspur. You know what I mean? That's how that's that's how desperate it was getting. But trust me, I really don't believe in this guy. I don't think he's the answer. And I'm going to go strong on this. I think two months, look, I think two months into the season, I think we could be looking for a new manager. I really do think it could be that bad. You know, people can sit here and say, you know, oh yeah, like I've seen one tweet, right? I, Oh, we can win 3 0 or lose 5 0. I'm excited. I'm sitting there. How can you be excited losing 5 0? You know, the thing is, it's all well and good this guy coming in and playing this attacking football. We don't have the defence to play it, and people need to wake up to this. You know, when you have as bad as defence as we do, and you don't improve it the way we haven't done, the first and foremost thing you have to do is protect your back line and just build from there. You know what I mean? And for me, I, I can't see this working out. I really can't. I. I envisage a Philip Cook um, coming into Palace there where, you know, he, he wanted to play this possession-based football. It just didn't work. He was gone within two months. I'm really uninspired by it and I'm really pissed off. I was away for two days in the most beautiful surroundings between mountains, you know, sitting there getting fucked up with the old lad and then uh, this news <laughs> breaks. And I, I honestly, it just wrecked. It just ruined my, uh, my breakaway. It ruined it. You know, I went away to get away from everything and then this shit happens and it's just totally uninspiring. And it, it, honestly, I think it's going to end bad. Wow. Um, very, oh. very good opening. <laughs> just in case you're all watching out there, this is not just the comedy channel or the horror show. It is actually Paxton Road TV, but very passionate there from Dave. And we've got well, a I just add that about. quickly. Yes, I just want to say, sorry, quickly, that, look, if he is appointed, which it looks like he's going to, I will back the manager. I will back him like I do every manager. I'd have to get behind him. You know, as much as it kill me, I'll have to get behind them. I will back them. And I do hopefully, I hope it goes right. I want to be sitting here having to hold my hands up two months in. You know what I mean? That we've won every game. I want to be sitting here holding my hands up. I hope it goes right. It's just not inspiring for me. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just going to say my little bit because I, I want you guys to say a bit more. As I said, I, I'm kind of, there's some points in there that I do agree with. It's a manager that I'd, I'd not really heard of before. I kind of heard the name. Um, didn't know any, didn't even know what he'd done before. You know, Roma, I had to look, oh, Shakhtar Donetsk didn't even know that. So it is the kind of choice that we kind of maybe linked towards Poch when he was at Southampton. Even when Poch was at Southampton, he had Premier League experience. So you could kind of see what he was doing. This guy, not in the Premier League, um, being in the Ukraine League, and I'll put up some of his record in a minute, but he's not, 
I don't know if he was the first choice. Obviously, Paratici, Paratici's come in and there's all kinds of rumours that he was looking at this guy and he's been looking at him for a while, blah, blah. I don't know. It could be all smoke and mirrors. It's what the football does, what he brings in. And as I said before, my mind, the most important thing is, yeah, we've got a director of football and he needs to make those decisions. But now what, what's what's the philosophy? What's How is this guy going to play? I've seen him say we've gone to a 3-4-3 three, three and he can play out from the back using the keeper. We haven't got a keeper, in my opinion, that can play out from the back. So it's going to be very important to see who he brings in. So again, I'm with you on this fact. I, I'm going to be behind this manager, but I'd like to see a little bit more from Spurs in terms of, right, this is what we're doing. This is who we... This is why we brought this guy in, because he plays this type of football. Now we're going to supplement that with these type of players. Um, I don't know if any of that's going to come out, whether or not it's going to be ending like a, a Philip Cocu in two months, or it's going to be an inspired choice. Time will tell. So, Sid, I'll come back upstairs to you next. What's your thought? An inspired choice, or is this a, a, a disaster waiting to happen? It's. I don't think it's a disaster waiting to happen, but um, like Mr Irish Hotspur says, it could end up being one of them. Oh, Mr. Irish Hotspur now. Wow, he's gone up in the world. This is nice. Um, <laughs> it's the first time I'm meeting him, so he can always address people <laughs> with Mr. <laughs> first. <laughs> sorry, sorry, for, sorry about that. Go on, sorry, Sid. Like, yeah, um, it's like you said, I, I don't know if Danny Rosie's Googled him yet, so unless Danny confirms <laughs> he had to Google him, then we can believe that no one's heard of him. But it's one of them, isn't it? It's the unexpected. Everyone's expecting miracles, but we're never going to get miracles at Tottenham Hotspur. He's probably was Paratici's second, third choice. But if Paratici's just come in and said straight away that this is the guy that I want, then we've got to go by him. Paratici obviously has been that Juventus. He knows his managers. He knows how to, you know his philosophy and whatever. So he must have had him in mind. And if he's, you've got to give him credit and you've got to give him time to um, let his decision not ponder, but just let it happen and see what happens in terms of. The contract situation and the coaching, right? He's got two-year contract with an extension to a third. Conte was given the same. The only difference I'm thinking is Conte wanted to bring his backroom staff. This guy's not bringing anyone. And if mm. you believe what social media said yesterday, he's got rid of all his backroom staff because he wasn't happy with the defending and whatever last year. So he's just got rid of them all and he wants to bring in a new contingent. And I don't know who he's going to have. And that's that's going to be a problem because it's not just Mason the manager. Mason and Ledley it's, King it's, are in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was he was raging about the injuries that he suffered last season. Yeah. I think that's what exactly. stemmed with culling his backroom staff. Exactly. So whether you believe that if, or not, if Mason stay in there, then we got problems. Ledley King, okay, legend at Tottenham, but again, he he, he needs his own people, and he needs people that are going to know know what we need because half that team. If he's got rid of the money, uh, his coaching staff because they were crap last season, then. Has he not looked at our defence? Because he's probably thinking, hold on, I'm just jumped out of a frying pan. I'm now going straight into the fire. This is and, exactly and... my point, Sid, about yeah. the defence. Because if he's going to exactly. think he's going to be playing out from the back with our defence, we've got a long season ahead of us. Because, yeah. uh, as I said, Hugo Luis yeah. can't can't kick for Toffee in terms of playing no. out for the defence. So Exactly. And the, thing. Other thing is, and the other thing as well is, being Italian, I think the main reason they've bought an Italian in is because we're sponsored by Hugo Boss. And Hugo Boss said, we need some Italian boys to model our suits because all the players that we've got is shine. So we need some models. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, we are God. really going for the Comedy <laughs> Channel Awards here. We might win one off this bloody show today. I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> time will what tell. What do you expect when you get a name like Fonseca, though, to be fair? <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Well, uh, talking of Fonseca, let's come to Fonseca's um, older brother, uh, as he's the Fonz. <laughs> and, and <turn laughs> no, younger the house brother, here. you mean. Younger brother. Oh, younger yeah, brother. sorry. I apologise, Shai. Younger brother, because you look a lot younger than he. But you look, say younger he looking brother, anyway. I younger think, looking I'm, brother. I think he's only <laughs> 40 something, so I am actually a lot older than him. But anyway. <laughs> I'll come to Shai. What's your thoughts on this um, potential um, appointment? Listen, I ain't going to diss my family, man. It's not happening. <laughs> oh, <this must> happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, and listen, I, I apologise to anyone that's heard me talk the last couple of days about this already because you probably heard what I've said. Um, listen, the, the, the common word that's been coming out has been underwhelming. And um, I can't disagree with that. When you look at the names that were presented before us the last few weeks in terms of Poch and Conte and even Ten Hag, 
and then you you hear a name like this that most people haven't haven't really heard of so you know it's going to be disappointing and the the reaction from everybody is is understandable um what i will say is um i'm going to give these guys a chance i think you have to if if that's the cards we've been dealt at the end of the day i think we have to try and support them and hope they hope they do well for us that's that's the best thing i can say about it i mean yeah, I have been watching videos. I, I don't know if you guys have watched that 35-minute kind of documentary mm. on him at Shakhtar. I thought that was quite an interesting uh, yeah. look at him. If you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out if, on YouTube. Um, I guess he fits the profile in a way in terms of what Daniel Levy asked for, the actual statement he put at the end of the season in terms of attack-minded, possession-based manager. He seems to fit that criteria. Um, but listen... <laughs> It doesn't matter when it comes to transfers or or managers or whoever. Anybody's a risk at the end of the day. They could work. They could not work. So you know, it's, we'll see. Time will tell. Um, like they they were said, he could be out in two months. He could be out by Christmas. We don't know. He's got a lot to prove to a lot of Spurs fans very very quickly because we haven't got patience, <laughs> and and we yeah. we shouldn't have patience because let's be honest. How long have we been waiting? <laughs> How long have we been waiting for anything? Yeah, so Spurs fans don't have patience, so he's going to have to really hit the ground running, uh, to be honest with you, and whether he does or not. Again, he's got to be backed in the transfer market. I mean, it was um, it was good to see Ali Gold putting out there yesterday that apparently already a lot of Spurs players have been put up for sale and they've been asked that their agents... Do we know who they are? For, no, names I, haven't I been mentioned. I tried looking and I was like, yeah, I couldn't no. see anything. Apparently... No names have been mentioned. But, There's a report um, apparently that um, REA's agreed terms with PSG at the moment. Yeah, I saw that today morning. actually, Kieran. Mm. Yeah, I did see that today. Um, so that's, you know, that I would say that would be a positive if that, if if this is really happening and getting rid of those players. It's got to be the first thing, isn't it? It's the first port of call, getting rid of the dead wood. You know, bringing through some of the academy, bringing your skips back and stuff like that. And then adding to it with some transfers that is going to suit the system he wants to play. Yeah, we, we, it, this has to fit together. This has to fit. There's no point the club buying players that are not going to fit into his system. You know, they've no. all got to work together on the same, be on the same hymn sheet for it to work. Um, so, yeah, the best thing I can say is I've got to give these guys a chance because, you know, this is what the, the cards were being dealt and we just we just got to go with it for now and hope for the best. And But there's no guarantees, like Darius said earlier, like Darius said, there's no guarantees. But we support them particularly to get us going yeah this this hoping for the best this is what, I, what i'm a bit we, sh we should be planning for the best not hoping for the best we should be planning for the best um kieran i will get your thoughts in a minute i just want to come to mike uh, in terms of this opening kind of question mike what's your thoughts in terms of this potential appointment disaster or inspirational move from paratici and mr levy certainly not inspirational um I would say, like everyone else has echoed, and I'll echo it, it is massively underwhelming. There's no doubts about that. Uh, as David's mentioned, most of us probably... You there? Oh, you're on. It's gone. It's gone. If you can get it back, Mike, we'll, we'll listen back to you. But we'll come back to you in a minute. And so, Kieran, whilst Mike is sorting out his microphone... Um, a of words there. The like that, you like that, <laughs> didn't you? I tell you what, I tell you what, today I'm putting us up for some awards because I like that myself. Even I like that one. Mike's up on his microphone. Kieran, sorry for that. Uh, I'm going to come to you next. What? <laughs> what's your thoughts on the matter? Um, look, I think like everyone else has said, it's a bit, it sounds a bit uninspired, but I think the reason it sounds so uninspiring is because we've gone from Ten Hag to Poch, to then Conte, which is like the pinnacle mm. of managers. Mm. And then we're going mm. to a manager where a lot of our fan base are going, hang a second, who's this? And having to Google them. So you're going from like a manager that everyone knows, everyone wanted, everyone was pushing for it, to a manager that half the fan base is now trying to Google. Um, so I think it is a bit underwhelming in that sense. I think, to be honest, whatever manager that came in, it was going to be a hard job either way. I think even if Conte came in, I don't think we would have turned around and won the league or anything. We may have won a, a trophy in our first season, but I don't think you know we would have won the league like some people were suggesting. Um, 
yeah, look, I don't know. For me, two-year contract, he plays a little bit more similarly to, I suppose, Pochettino's game style. I'm not saying that I want Pochettino in in two years' time, but I'm saying if we try to point him this window and that was genuine, maybe this is just a thing of get someone in who fit the profile of playing a lot more like his game style and then at the end of the two years bring Pochettino in. There is an optional third year apparently in that Fonseca uh, contract. So maybe it's a thing of if we can't get Poch in two years, we extend that for another year um, if he's doing well or something. I don't know. But so Do you really believe yeah. this is all geared towards getting Poch back? Do you think this is uh, almost like a stopgap in terms of not being able to get Poch in now? You could see that you point think? of view. Definitely. You could see that point of view. Definitely. Yeah. Do you know what? I think it's a, I think it's a, a mix. I think it's one of those... Everyone loved Poch's football, you know, on the front foot right all the time. And I think now that's why they're trying to bring in someone who's going to put a similar style forward. So at least we're like happy with what we're seeing on the pitch. Like Mourinho, it was a case of if we won a game, it was either, yeah, we're happy we won or Jesus Christ, we've sat on the back foot for like the last 20 minutes defending a one goal lead. And it's a bit boring. So I think they're just trying to appease us with what we're seeing on the pitch. And then in two years time, if we can get Pochettino, at least we've got a team that is playing similarly to that already that it's not like going from Pochettino to Mourinho and it's a completely different style or system that we're trying to play. Yeah, I, I, I you know what, the more I think about it, the, if they if they are using this guy as a bit of a filler um, because they can't get the person that they want, it could be a bit of a choice. But like David was saying, this could go pear-shaped in a few months. Then what do we do? You know what I mean? If it goes pear-shaped within six to nine months, then we're in a bit of a pickle it's likely that we're going to send out the SOS again for Ryan Mason, which is not going to inspire me. If, if we do that again, then it really will be done. Uh, Mike, check. Mike, check. One, two. One, two. Mike, you there? Oh, oh no. he's not there. Mike, check. He's Mike, check. It's, not happening. it's not happening at the moment with Mike. Oh. No, we can't <laughs> hear you, mate. We got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, we'll, we'll, Write uh, it down on a piece of paper uh, and just put yeah, it to the screen. Right. <laughs> put it up there like this. You know what I mean? Put it up I'm the smile for the show must go on. The show must <laughs> go on. We must continue onwards. Um, I'm going to put this. Um, I'm going to put this bit of detail out here. Um, Mike, you must have seen this. Uh, I'm going to put this bit of detail up here in terms of Mr. Fonseca's record. Um, as I said, some of these names, they're all mostly from that. I don't even know how to pronounce some of this. Dezembro. Or develop, I'm going to try and even do it in Portuguese to make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. Mm. Pinor Olivares or whatever that's called. These teams are from Portugal from way Sounds back Italian. when. I have no idea. Take the only out, that... impress me. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones I know about really here are Braga, Shakhtar, Donetsk and Roma. And if we go from those records, it appears... And Porto. It doesn't... And Porto. Sorry, and Porto. I must apologise. There's Porto in there as well. But if you look at the record at Porto, you look at the record at Braga, he didn't stay there very long. Uh, he spent three years at Shakhtar Donetsk and won everything at Shakhtar Donetsk pretty much. Let me just take off this bottom banner so we can see what his um, actual honours were. So three times in a row in terms of the Ukrainian League, um, Cup, Super Cup at, at, at uh, Shakhtar. And in Roma... He's done the double three three years in a row. Correct. He's done the double. Mm. Correct. Mm. Um, but saying that, who else is in bloody Ukraine, U Ukraine Premier League? You Kiev, tell me some other team. Dynamo oh. Kiev. Uh, mm. Dynamo yeah. Rostov, I think, maybe. Well, Dynamo <laughs> no, Dynamo I'm just, I'm, just to, I'm just trying to name teams now. <laughs> Dynamo Christ. the Magician. <laughs> Dynamo the Magician. There we go. This is the sort of teams he's won bloody three times in a row he's done this, you know, I mean, a double. And he's been playing against Dynamo the Magician, Dynamo Rostov. Who oh, else is there in oh. the Ukraine League? Come on. So we got to take that with a bit of a pinch of salt. His Roma record, again, is, is pretty decent. But, you know, he doesn't seem to be one of their managers that's a long-term project. So, this kind of maybe ties in with some of the, the smoke and mirrors, the kind of, like, mystique that we might be looking to put him in as a stopgap. I don't know. What's, what's your thoughts on this actual record? Is this, is this something we can work with? Do we have to look at his Roma record and think, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a person for a, a filler? Mm, I what, think context you know is what? needed. Yeah, go on, go on, can go I just actually put a bit of context into Shakhtar? Because the one thing that I, when I first looked at it, I was like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't really say much. Like, it's the Ukrainian Premier League and the Ukrainian Cup. But mm. prior to him actually going to Shakhtar, um, I, th I think it was like they hadn't won the league for like the previous two years and they hadn't won 
like the cup in a certain amount of years. He came in, won the double yeah, in all three, three years. It? Yeah, it was like the last three. Since he's left, I think it was like they haven't won the Ukrainian Cup like since either. So it's like they hadn't won any of those leagues or competitions for like two to three years before he came in. They've come and won it all three years is there on the double. And then since he's left, they've been unable to win the Cup since. So I'm not saying that, oh my God, he's going to do wonders at Tottenham just because of that. But I think maybe that puts a little bit oh, of like perspective point. on what he's mm. done at Shakhtar in a sense. There's also, there's also a country, if you look at the... Up. Yeah, if you look, if you sorry, Sam, if you go back on that um, overlay, if you don't mind, I can't remember how to pronounce that name. It's Pacos de Ferreira. If you actually, Pacos de Ferreira, just yeah, he actually got them. Actually, if you just he got them to a third place. It, it's all good. It's all good. of course, of course. But he got them to a third. I think he got them to third place or a Champions League spot, and they were nowhere near the Champions League places when he was when he was managing. And then also with Roma, and it's difficult to say because the Roma board really butchered that squad and Monchi yeah. who was there before Fonseca joined as a sporting director butchered that squad and literally increased the age of that squad to a to a position where a guy who wants to press intensely attack ha, like attack yeah, for the majority of the game is not going to be able to get that out of players like Edin Dzeko players like Pedro who came in mm. and did okay Mkhitaryan who's done very well this season but they're all in their 30s plus and I I think that Zaniola getting injured at the very start of this season is going to affect any manager when you lose your best player, your best attacking player. I think he lost a lot of important players this, this season and yeah, they were doing really well at the start of the season and they finished seventh, but there's a lot of context that is needed. My only problem is, is if he comes into this team, Tottenham, and he's given the players and he's given, do you know what I mean, a system and he, he develops a system that we can play in, is it going to be a case of us not giving him enough time to sort of deploy those tactics because he's only on a two-year deal or is he just not going to be able to, do you know what I mean, get those results in the Premier League? Because the leagues are so different. They're so much different. Do, than we, do we not need just, to just have a bit of, I, I say, and we have probably the most patience out of all the uh, football, um, out of all football supporters within this country. But given the state of where we are as a club, is there not an element of us needing to give a bit of patience towards Fonseca, Fonseca and just... And just see what he is about, and and just I suppose lower maybe lower our expectations to a certain degree because the clubs uh, it's in I say turmoil it is to a certain degree. Um, but if we had a little bit of patience and just I suppose just see what I mean, pre-season will probably tell us a lot of a lot of stuff that we want to know. About. Well, the transfers will be a big teller, about won't the philosophy, you? About the transfers, mm. who he keeps in, who he gets out. I think pre this preseason is going to be massive, massive for Tottenham. Just um, to answer, just to answer you there, Mike. We didn't build the stadium and the training complex to be given nobody's a chance. Mm. We didn't do that for that. You know, we built the training the, the training complex in the stadium to have the very best of, of the best here. That's that that's what we were told we were getting it for. Mm. Not not mm. not to be given Fonseca a chance. And just on what Darius was saying. You know, you could say the same about Mourinho. You could say, say the same about Mourinho's time at Tottenham or say the same about uh, any manager's time. Like, I, I, I thought the Mourinho lost for, for Tongan. Christian Eriksen, he also had a lot of injuries to deal with throughout the season. You know what I mean? So, it, that, that for me, that just seems like it's making excuses for the guy. You know, if, if, if like, we can all sit here and say, oh, let, let's put it into context. But where was that under Mourinho? Where was that under, but Mourinho under was a uh, other to managers us, previously that we have? It, you can say the same for any manager, can't. any great manager. I, I, I can't country. agree with the Mourinho thing because Mourinho wasn't playing to the team's strengths. And he was, at, at one point, he was, he was literally, and you mentioned something earlier, David, and you make a fair point about, obviously, the defence, being defensive with a bad defence isn't going to, I mean, being attacking with a bad defence isn't going to work, but at the same time, being defensive with a bad defence is probably just as worse. Because like I said earlier, when Mourinho's allowing a team like us with Dyer and Sanchez at the back to, to concede 15, 20 shots a game, I don't know what he's expecting to happen. So for me... I know, but the same happened when Mason came in. You know, we went to play this expansive football. We got slapped Mason's by Leeds. Got, Mason's we got, got slapped no by other idea. teams. I, Mason had no idea what he was doing. Again, he, I don't think he was playing to the strengths of the team because he was benching players who shouldn't have been benching, playing players who shouldn't have played. So Josh for Mourinho me, went attacking against everything. We got slapped 5-4. This is the team. This manager can come in and play the attacking style he wants. 
we're shedding goals at the back. We're going to leak goals at the back, and this is going to be the problem. Like, we cannot sit here as Spurs fans and demand this attack on football. But we should sit here looking at the club and demanding what's best for what's right now. And Fonseca is not the best option for right now. We don't have the players to go and play his high-pressing style. You think Harry Winks is going to be doing all the pressing and everything else? Ben Davies, Eric Dyer, like it's not going to, like we can all have this fantasy and this idea about how this That's guy fair. plays. Again, That's we don't fair. have the players. But is That's it Conte fantasy as well though? That my my thing obviously Conte got me excited and I was very uh, Conte is the in my opinion top three managers in the world at the moment. I got very excited, but I, maybe I got too ahead of myself because again, we all say that the board are the reason why we've bought in Fonseca and the board are the reason why we're not going to get anywhere further. But with Conte, Conte demands so much that I, for me, I, I would never, ever expect Daniel Levy to ever give Conte what he needs to do well. So for me, if you're going to give Conte 17 million euros a year and not actually give him this, this, the tools to actually succeed, that's even worse than giving a guy like Fonseca a two-year contract who's on maybe three or four million euros. I know that's not the right He's mentality. He's going to use that 70 million a lot. I, I'd rather trust Conte with that 70 million than Fonseca. I know. Yeah, 100%. But, I'm, but the thing is with Conte is it, it could have gone up in flames just as worse if he didn't get what he wanted because he literally left the winning team because he didn't get what he wanted. And, and that's and my fear. Point. And that's why I just believe that... It's not that Fonseca is the right deal. And my anger with Fonseca comes with if you're gonna if you're willing to spend 17 million a year on Fonseca, why not pay a compensation fee to Ten Hag and I? Is that how and much you to pay Fonseca for 17 million? No, sorry, Conte, 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 sorry. So Conte wanted more than 15 million, which is what Jose was on. If you're willing to pay more than 50 million euros a year for Conte, either go and get him or use that money that you were gonna get for Conte to go and get Ten Hag and spend that. Money so, on the compensation fee in the contract. Oh, well, the, point that, just, just, the point of that, the point of that as well is. That. So, sorry, mate. Just before I come to that, the reason for Conte though, Conte is has already demanded what he. If you read and go by the press, he says if he comes in, he's going to want this amount of money per year, but he's going to need to have X amount of millions to rebuild that squad. My problem at the moment is if Fonseca comes in and he's been told, well, you haven't really got much money. Those players cannot play that three four three four three system playing out from the back. I am telling you now. Hugo Lloris does not have the capabilities of playing out from the back with his feet. Moon Boots, as David has labelled him, I do not believe he's the player that's going to be part of that back three. Sanchez, number six, whatever you want to call him, no chance on earth is he going to be. The only that's player you've got Rodon. Rodon and that's Toby saying, But we can't rely on one. We, you can't play in the back three of one player. That's what I'm saying. We're going to need to yeah, have more than Fonseca, that. So. Fonseca, he, he often has one of his centre midfielders will drop into that back three to dictate the play, which is, I, I'm going, I haven't seen this, but this is what I've been going by mm. on the research. Yeah. So he quite often, which would be, if it was at that time, it would be Hoiberg. Hoiberg will drop into that back three alongside Rodon and Toby and dictate play from out, from out the back. And, we use the keeper. I know Laurie says in his distribution is not great, There's but no again, going by research, with we can't do no, with but going by no research, chance. Fonseca likes his goalkeeper to to come into that as a quartet. But exactly, again, I've seen Laurie play. Out we all say it's transfers. Any manager that came in needs to have a freshen of the squad. So at the end of the day. Mm. I, I need to see what's going on in this market in the transfer window before I can. Re you know, if not, David, if yeah. nothing happens in this transfer window, I'm joining you. One hundred percent. I don't care. If it's the thing is, right? It's 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 rebuilding the squad, but doing it with ambition, mm. right? We're like I've said this many times on many channels. We're going down the exact same route Arsenal went down, right? Mm. They got Unai Emery in, didn't have the patience, didn't back him, sacked him. We got Jose in, didn't have the patience, didn't back him, sacked him. They got Mikel Arteta. We're now getting Paulo Fonseca. This is the problem. We've gone exactly down the route Arsenal have, but they're a lot more. They're about four or five years advancing to that. And they're now just outside of Europe. And they've we're got two years, well. three years into it. Imagine where we're going to be in another four or five years' time. The thing is, there is no way of sorting this without throwing money at it. You're competing with City, United, Chelsea, Agreed. Liverpool. We're all going to spend massive again this summer. We ain't doing this on the cheap. It's about time we start rolling with the fucking big boys here. We start. We well, need to start we, rolling with the big boys, or even well, just start well, doing your recruitment wiser. Just start well, doing your recruitment right better, and then have the best well, manager in to take that forward. I it's about it's ambition. ambition. I agree. Well, I agree. We, I was going to come to Shai for his comments. Sorry, Mike. I just want to come to Shai because I, I know you had you had your hand up before, patiently waiting, and you've got to sometimes patiently That's wait right. on this show. But what, what's your thoughts on some of the things we've been talking about? Nah, well. <sighs> It's, it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to deny. Everyone's got their point of view, and you, you can't really disagree with a lot that's been said. 
Mm. Um, I, I can only I can only say go back to um, we've we've made a decision in bringing um, Paratigi, by the way it's pronounced. So I've been told by an Italian person called Iggy really? on our channel. It's Paratigi, wow. so wow. we have to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> That's the way. I apologise to the Italians out there. <laughs> so, and I said, you can apologise to Iggy. That's all because Iggy gets quite a thing about that. Um, but uh, no, but at, at the end of the day, I mean, this is this is his first decision he's had to make. Even though we still don't know that he's been employed by the club officially, but <laughs> this this is his first big decision that he's had to make. So you would like to think. If this is your biggest first decision in your job after you know leaving Juventus after so many years, surely you're, you're going to do your best to make the first decision right. Yeah, you're not going to blow up in your first big decision you're going to have to make for the club. So I'd like to think this, you know, even though it wasn't first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, it's a choice that is going to try and help us. Yeah, that's that's all I'm going to say on that. Go on, Mike. I was just going to say, yeah. we all seem to be concentrating on the negatives, which I, I completely get because it is an underwhelming, uh, well, it's potentially an underwhelming um, signing as, a, as Spurs bringing in a manager. But for all, for all we know, he could be great in the job. He could be what we needed. And we, I know I'm probably speaking from a, a point where I'm trying to be optimistic about the the, the um this potential sort of signing off on Sega, but isn't that what Tottenham Hotspurs are all about? Being optimistic and sort of hoping for the best. I know we all get ourselves bigged up and we were like, oh yeah, yeah, we Tottenham gonna do great. And then we set ourselves up for failure. But it just, I don't know. Like, I just don't like to see a manager being written off before he's actually mm. been given a chance. And mm. for the sake sort of, of like, the blame has to go on the board for, for those links to the those, expect- big, those big managers, though, don't you think? Gonna, I, I, I get that. I, I don't disagree with it. But I'm just thinking on the basis of with the expectations and where we are as a club right now, if we lowered them, just to just being realistic, if we just lowered our expectations and just be like, well, let's just see what happens. Worst case scenario is we're proven right and Fonseca's just it's just a waste of time, waste of two years, and, and we think, have to get rid of it. But just, I do, I do agree. I do that. I do agree. The time thing is what we have to do. But have we got that time to give him? Because, like Dave was saying, it could be within two or three months. I just want to come to to Kieran and just ask a quick question. What is what is his style of play? What do you think is directly going to mean for the players that are there? I'm not talking about who we're going to potentially sign. But if we didn't sign any really massive players during the summer given the fact that we're not going to be spending hundreds of millions this, this summer in the transfer window, what does it mean, his style of play, for some of the players that are currently... Can you see us being able to play the way he wants us to play, given the, the substandard performances we saw last season? So th- this is what I was going to um, jump on when everyone was you know, talking about you know, him and the players we have. The, big, the way I see this playing out is like Pochettino's first season with us, where it's just we got players who just do not kind of fit that system. And the end of that first season is really going to be whatever Deadwood is left and bringing the players that do. I know we're sitting here saying that we need to clear out the Deadwood now, but when we're talking like eight, nine players, maybe more, that we got to clear out, I don't see every single one of them being gone this transfer window because, I mean, it doesn't look like they're flying out the door at the moment. So who are we going to get that's going to come in and buy this Deadwood? So they might it might take another season to get rid of all of it. Um, look, for me, I, d- I don't think his play style is going to work straight away. The big thing I would say, though, is what manager, if we're not willing to spend in this transfer market to actually rebuild the way we're saying we need to and buy players in the back line who are going to strengthen us at the back, then what would bring in Conte have done anyway? He would have come in, then we're not going to spend the money mm. on him anyway. And um, what I will Rick's say is... Yeah, exactly. And what I will say is with Fonseca is Eric Ten Hag, as soon as like uh, we'd had that call with him and then he extended his deal with Ajax, did he not come out and say he knows where he is in his career and he's happy at Ajax? So it doesn't look like he's on the board. This, Conte, this, this stream obviously... is going a little bit pear-shaped at the moment, if he's still All here. Right. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, right. yeah sorry. Um, yeah. So yeah, look, Eric Ten Hag, not on the table realistically anymore. Pochettino is not on the table. And Conte looks like it's definitely able after all, so we've already butchered that. So it's kind of a thing of, you know, who who would we bring in 
who like who genuinely what top class manager could we bring in at the moment that we haven't either butchered Kieran, the con- I know you the problem with the top line I know you say that, but we have content at the negotiation table we yeah, but we don't anymore. I mean, this is the thing. But, but we don't anymore, and that's what I'm saying. So no, we, we don't anymore. Like but you're saying, what manager realistically could we have appointed? We had one. No, I'm, I'm, saying, what, I'm, no, I'm, saying, I'm not saying point. who could we have appointed. I'm saying who can we now appoint because we've we've messed up that Conte talk. So we can't talk about Conte. Like let's bring him in. Let's bring him in when the talks aren't there to be had anymore. Because that's the like po- saying let's go like a yeah. Poch- Pochettino. Well, it's not going to happen. So what's the point of even mentioning him? If you take those people out of the conversation, see who is actually left right now that we could potentially appoint, who would we have? Because if Conte was still on the table, I don't think we would be looking at Fonseca. We'd probably still be in talks with Conte, and, if you know what I mean. And, so because yeah. we've butchered that, I think that's why we've now moved on to Fonseca. And, and the other problem is as well, if you go back 10 years, there was an abundance of top-class managers in the game. But if you look now, once you go outside the top sort of three managers or top five managers you're looking at managers that have little to no experience um so it almost becomes a difficult market to find the right person and whoever we get in if it's not one of those top three or five managers then it is going to be an element of it's a gamble because they've got as I say, little to no experience, and the experience they have got are at either smaller clubs, or they might have had a season at a top club, but it's not panned out too well. And like you look at Zidane, you look at Perlo, great players, but they've come in. Uh, even Frank Lampard, great player, but he's come in, had a season that's not worked out. And, and this is where I'm coming from. So, like, who would you go for if the top one of the top five managers aren't on the aren't on the table for whatever reason? Whoever you come get in before, that is, see, this is the point. Is it, is it out. David, just, just before you continue, out, sorry, I, I, I want to continue. I just want to apologize if the stream was going down, there was a little bit of internet connection problems there for myself. So, whether or not it went dead, I'm not quite sure. But sorry about that. Viewers are watching. Sorry, David. Sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah, like this is the problem. At, at the time when we were looking for a new manager, you know, Real Madrid sat Zidane. The, um, there was a couple of other, other managers around at the same time, you know. The thing is, there was managers there to go and get, and they didn't do it. And this is the point. We should never be at the point of appointing Fonseca because there was a load of top-class managers around at the time that we could have went and get. And this is my point about ambition. And, Mike, you were saying about expectations. We need to lower them. Why should we lower them when Daniel Levy built them up? Daniel Levy built them up by bringing in Jose Mourinho, not backing him. He built them up by by putting the links out there with Pochettino and Conte to get season ticket sales over the line. He built them up by mm. building the stadium and the training I complex. Now, why should I have to lower my expectation when all that all, and all he has done is just built them up, telling us this is what we're building for, this is what we're building for, and then let us down every time? It's like buying a mansion and putting a and putting a Nissan Micra in the garage. You just don't do it. It doesn't look right. <laughs> I don't, this, David. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but. I, it's just, I suppose where I'm just coming from is I just see Tottenham in a completely different space right now to where we were when the likes of, uh, when we likes so we were in the Champions League in that, in that final. Uh, we're in a completely different space for whatever reasons, good and bad reasons. Well, it's predominantly all bad reasons, but, and that's where I'm just coming from, uh, from my from my perspective. I, if I lower my expectations and I'm not going to be disappointed and, and the, only, the only outcome could be is... If I am dis- well, if Tottenham have a bad season, then they've they've done what I think could happen. If Fonseca does well, then he's he's exceeded my expectations, and it's only a bonus. What does I this get, mean for Harry Kane? I don't what get completely this- where I- David is. I completely agree with what David is. Why should we same, have our expectations same. lowered? But we are where we are, aren't we? Unfortunately, so, it's I- frustrating. What, what does this mean for Harry Kane? What does this appointment, if it is, and I said we're most likely to have. Him appointed in the next few days. What does this mean for Harry Kane for this summer? Do, does it does it inspire him to think? Oh yeah, this is the manager I want to work under. I want to stay here for this project because it's going to be a project. Don't get. Let's not get this twisted. Uh, Fonseca's not going to come on or come in and turn us into top four with the players we've currently got. This is a rebuild job. However long that rebuild takes, whether we can do it within one summer, one transfer window, I doubt it. Um, it's going to take several transfer windows. Is this going to inspire Harry Kane to stay? Is this going to inspire Son to sign a new contract? Is this going to make people like Endon Belly think, you know what, what have I come here for? The players that we need going forward, are they going to be inspired by this as a choice of manager? I'll put it out there to all of you. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't mind taking this. Um, 
I think with Kane, I think it's not just about the manager, it's about the players that are coming in. And I think that if we're talking just solely manager, I think it only would have been Conte that would have kept him. Because um, mm. I think Conte, it kind of comes with the assumption we're going to spend money, you know, especially when we've got uh, Paratiki in, I think he said is how it's pronounced. Um, especially Paratici. when you kind of got Paratici, sorry. Yeah. When you got Paratici and Conte, you think, okay, cool, we're going to spend some money here. And I think that's the only thing that would have kept Kane because he would have known, right, we, we kind of mean business, but it would have needed backup, like bringing in big name players. Like if we mm-hmm. go, if we bring in Conte and then bring in Anderson at centre back, I don't think Kane's going to go, oh, bloody hell, we're, we're doing some serious business here. He would have needed some big name players. You sit, talk about that uh, interview with Gary Neville. He said how he, you know, he'd love to play with De Bruyne. That's the type of players he wants to be putting himself around, not. Oh, we've got Anderson. He could be a good centre back in the future. We've got <laughs> this player who could be good in a couple of years' time. He wants now. We've got Danny Hughes coming in you know as well, I mean? potentially. Yeah, that's going to inspire Harry Kane, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, but all jokes aside, all jokes aside, though, is how realistically, how many players do you think we're going to need to get out and then get in to make this work for this summer? I'm just talking about this summer because I, I can't even look beyond this summer into next season because I know this is going to be a rebuild. So. This summer alone, how many players do we have to shift and then bring in to suddenly make us at least competing for the top six, top four? Where, where, where do, what do we think? It's got to be at least five. Uh, I was just about to say five. I was just about to say five. I think five is a realistic number, isn't it? I mean, we'd all like probably about 10 or 12 out. But for one, I mean, you can't, you can't get that number out and bring that number in and then start the season and just just gelling and all that just won't happen will well, it? Like you said, we've got a left back and a, a centre mid already that should be integrated into that team so I don't think that we should be really investing in a left a left back and a centre mid I think the right back has to be sorted out a backup striker has to be sorted out another yeah. centre mid has to be sorted out there's there's opportunities for players to be bought on a good deal. There's mm. players like Sabitzer who have a year left on their contracts, who are very good players. But like David said, what's the reason for them wanting to come to Tottenham apart from a big pay package? We're probably not even going to pay them in the first place. We don't have the clout like a Juve, like an Arsenal have. You can still, do you know what I mean? Even if Arsenal were eighth place, bottom of the barrel, there's players like Eduardo Camavinga who looks up to Arsenal, who, who was an Arsenal fan and he's a 17-year-old wonder kid. Basuma wants to go to Arsenal. It's Arsenal who don't want Basuma. They want to go after Ruben Neves. We don't really have that clout as a club and as a team to really do why, that. So it's Why not though, Dallas? Because they're, they're not even got European football this season. Well, that's so, it. It's the history, isn't it? It's, the, it's the history. Of... And, and, and drives Marl away because he's constantly negotiating with them. But it's part, I, part, I part, part, part of that, that is true. And the negotiations... Daniel Levy's always said that if, if there's a, a transfer a bid in war, then he's not going to get involved. But at the end of the day, you can, like you said, you can improve the recruitment and find these gems before these other clubs find them. Like I said, Coop Miners from AZ Altmar would have been a perfect sentiment for a staff. He's gone to Atalanta for 20 million euros now. And it's like these these signings are available to be found. You just need the infrastructure to be but able the to make it. But the key here is we've got... We've got a, d- a director of football in. So, in theory, Levy shouldn't be involved in these discussions. Well, this is why I need to see this transfer window. Like I said, the outgoings are the most important thing for me, but also bringing in, like you said, adequate players. Just Kane, me personally, I don't think Kane's going anywhere. I think he's trapped. He's like jail. You three yeah. years on your contract, you can't go nowhere. Like, at the end of the day, that's that's on you for signing a six-year contract. I, yeah. I don't feel bad for it. six-year contract? I don't, feel, I don't I mean... feel bad for the guy for signing a six-year contract. And then when it goes to shit, you want to you wanna book out. That's on uh-huh. you. But in terms of getting money for him. If he stays a year with Fonseca, it goes to shit. He has to go next year because he has two years left. So it's like, even if it goes to shit, Harry Kane is still going to go. So you're still going to have to, do you know what I mean? Think about replacing. This rebuild is inevitable. And that's why I can kind of understand why David's angry because is Fonseca the right guy for this inevitable rebuild, which is the most important. And like I said, this was the most important managerial decision of our modern history and it's Paolo Fonseca. So I can see the disappointment. So I'm going to come to, I'm gonna, might be, I'm gonna, might oh, yeah, yeah, let me just come to a shy and ask a, a bit of a question. So do you think, because obviously the director of football, I think in general, and I can say this for the fan base, most of us wanted Danny Levy away from football related matters. We wanted the director of football in. The director of football is obviously the one who's now keen in making this appointment, but he must be under some constraints. What I say, what I mean by that is, Daniel Levy must have said to him, right, you can get any manager you like, but we can only afford to pay him X millions of pounds a year. So maybe this is the choice. He's right, okay, I can't get Conte because 
I'm not allowed to spend 17 million a year. He may have been given a budget of 10 million a year for this particular manager. Is Do you think that that, that might be something that's going to hamper us going forward? Because, again, we're, we're surmising here that we're saying the director of football is the one who's making the decisions, but he must be under some sort of constraint in terms of how much he can spend as such on this this mm. manager. Well, I think it's been said many a time that um, all the directors of football that have worked for Spurs have found it hard under the constraints that have been given to them, whether it's been Baldini, uh, Arneson, whoever. So every mm. director of football had this said it's not an easy job. I mean, the director of football can only work to the remit that the, obviously Levy's going to give him. So yep. y your hands are tied to an extent, aren't they? There's nothing mm -hmm. he, he can do about that. He's just got to be very clever in how he works i guess and and again this is one of those where you know if you can throw lots of money at it you're going to get you're going to get better quality but if you can't i mean i'll go back to i still don't quite understand why we couldn't get a canvas or a ragnarik because i would have preferred that's my thing deal. again I would, I would it fits our model so much more doesn't it show yeah if it's our I mean, model like, so much more like Campos would have been perfect. yeah sam said earlier yeah. i remember it on another stream that i i get uh for it and i'm getting it wrong now for strategy um, I get that if Conte was coming, but if, mm. as a partnership, that would make sense. But then a Campos or a Ragnarik, I think, would have fitted, fitted the club 100%. Better. 100%. Oh, Let me just come to a few comments because we've got so many comments coming through. So apologies for not having been able to read them, but I hope most of them have been shown on here. We've got this one. Had Jose gotten screening like he wanted, the discussion wouldn't be happening. That's from Michael here. Um, spot on, Levy is a common denominator in all this. So a lot of people are saying that Levy is still got his fingers all over this hit that like button thank you very much another comment here if potch is a point if potch is appointed reavers he came from a mid-table side and look what happened let's give fonseca a chance if nothing mm. else he can keep the seat warm for potch's return in two years what's your thoughts on that david yeah on that look you, you can't compare fonseca and pochettino yeah. pochettino would took over what was more or less a newly promoted southampton team and he had them up there challenging with the big boys and fell off towards the end of the season the promise was there under Pochettino. He had, like, look look what he'd done at Southampton. A please, club please. like Southampton. He had them on the brink of Europe. You cannot please, compare please. Pochettino to Fonseca. Fonseca's manager is Shakhtar or the Nets, which are shit in terms of European football. <laughs> Porto, shit in terms of European football. Braga, shit in terms of European football. You cannot compare the two. It's, it's, I love Philip. I like Philip. You know, I know Philip, but honestly, that's ludicrous. I can't have people comparing Pochettino and Fonseca because what Pochettino done for Southampton, he's also done it in the Premier League. Fonseca hasn't. So he's gone to he's gone to Porto where he's expected to win the league. He's gone to Shakhtar where you're expected to win the league. Let's be honest about it. You know, they have one of the biggest budgets in Ukraine. Port, Port have one of the biggest budgets in, uh, in, in Portugal. You know, uh, and for me, I don't think you can compare the two. I, I genuinely don't think you can compare the two. I'll just come back to this other comment. Thank you for watching, Danny the Barn. We like to see you on these mm. streams. Uh, Danny Livery is lowering our expectations by decision making. He is using the money elsewhere to improve the infrastructure, mm. infrastructure like an effing golf course, which we've seen. A nice golf course, by the way. But um, I played there a golf enough course. times. It's a nice golf course. White whips. Is that okay. meant to be the, uh, the teaser for Bale, the taste for Bale to come back? <laughs> yeah. Give him a golf course right next to the training stadium. Well, I think they've seen the interview with Gene Ev as well and said this is a way to get Kane and Bale to potentially stay, isn't it? There'll be a lot of deals made on that golf course, won't there? <laughs> Good or bad. So we've got this another comment here. No way, man. Kane is off and we need to use the pounds to uh, for a whole rebuild and get rid of the dead wood. Kane's trapped. There's no way yeah, Kane's going. He's trapped. Kane's trapped, bro. And well, if they pay one fifty, they pay one fifty, then go. Like if they pay yeah. one fifty, then I'll take the one fifty. But the guy's trapped. He, I, I can't see him leaving this season. I really. Wasn't can't. Sancho? Wasn't he recently valued at a uh, hundred mil? Well, Sancho apparently doesn't so want ninety-five million euros. Ninety-five, right? So if he's worth ninety-five, then surely Kane's worth more than one hundred and fifty on that basis. Uh, well, he's been sold to one hundred and fifty. They're not going to get more than one hundred and fifty for him. No one's going to pay more than one hundred and fifty exactly. for Harry Kane, who's twenty-eight years of age. Guys, can blah, you blah, 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 can you blah. see Harry Kane putting a transfer request in? No, I really can't. I really can't. I, the guy, I, you know the guy, is, I can. Do you know what? You? Do you know what? I, I don't can, think yeah. he would this transfer window, but I think he will at the end of next season because this well, is yeah, the thing. Who who have we got? coming like we've not we're not going to bring in a top manager we're not going to bring in massive names so mm. it's only going to get worse for him from this point so i think it i think by the end of this season he probably well, will th there's this comment here from shane black kane has already put in a transfer which again we're surmising i i i 100 agree i think he will i personally believe after the euro what's that gonna do <laughs> 
Well, it's going like to force someone's hand. It's going to make people aware Ow. that he's unhappy. I think a lot of the teams are aware that he's unhappy. There's only a certain number of teams that's going to be in for Harry Kane. We're, like, we're talking about the likes of Man City here in the Premier League. We could talk about Chelsea, but I don't think I wanted to. Chelsea aren't going to get in. They want Harlem. Um, they're already spending their money. It's we're, we're only Man talking, City, really. Taking about Manchester United, they could potentially do it if they really wanted to stump up they're that getting sort of Sancho. Cash. But they're not going to. They're not you're right. They're not going to do Sancho and. They're not going to do hurricane at the same time. Mm. We've got PSG on the radar. Um, who else is out Nothing. there? PSG is signing Vinaldum, Donnarumma, that Hakimi. They already make the only team that ha- Harry Kane can go to is Manchester, Manchester City. City. There's oh, no other club. This could be to. this could be yeah. a way of forcing it. Really really I don't think he's going to do anything during the Euros. I don't think we'll hear anything from Harry Kane until after the Euros is finished. But from that point, if he's not happy, I cannot see him just saying, "Okay, I'm just going to stay here for another two years." Um, being held. I don't, I don't know what what I don't know what hand in a transfer request is going to do. You're on. Shows, you have three years. It, what it does, it shows it shows his ambition is not to stay with Spurs because he could stay quiet. The guy did an hour long interview and he's basically said that he don't want to be it. Like we all what? know that he doesn't want to be it. That's that an was elephant more or less in a room. transfer request, though, wasn't it? That yeah. is, and that's what I'm saying. That's, you know what I mean? It's an what, elephant in a room. Like we know that's going to happen. What what he was doing in that interview, he wasn't directly because if you see, there was no direct quotes that said I want to leave Spurs. When you put in a transfer hint. request, that says I want to leave Spurs. That's the difference. An interview. With Gary Neville directing certain questions, it's well, well, they put that together. You can see that. But he never once said, I want to leave Spurs. He said, if you don't match my ambition, then I've got to think about it and I've got to have conversations with Daniel Levy. But no way did he say he wants. If you go and say, Daniel, here you go. That's my transfer request. He's saying, I want out and I want out now. That will, That's a whole game changer right there. Nah, that's Levy, just just, Levy will laugh at him. He'll just say, you're not going nowhere, mate. Like, I'm getting 150 or you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I, I agree. I agree with both of you in a sense, but I, like I said already, I think my my thoughts are like it's kind of in between. He's mm. gonna. He'll probably put. I think he will put in a transfer request because he will just want out. It, it'll get to a point where he just thinks this is the only thing I can do to realistically um, get a move. And mm. I don't think he'll be sold this season. I think he'll be held hostage this season, so we can potentially mm. try and get rid of or try and rebuild, and then next season. In the transfer yeah. window is when we'll sell him because he'll be 29 yeah. then, and it's kind of like a two years he's left, already yeah. yeah he's already put in a transfer request. Yeah. He's got two years. Let's just cash in the most money we cash can in. while we still can. I think well, that's realistic. And from our perspective, well, 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 right now, that's the most well, sensible well. thing for Tom. But will we yeah. still be able to get potentially now? If someone offered 150 now because he's got you know he's younger, obviously, than he would be next year. Um, mm-hmm. Three years on his contract, blah blah blah. He gets the next year, he's 29, he has a, a bit more of an injury-prone season left. Okay? Are we going to expect then someone to pay £150 million for him? I don't think that's going to no. be the case. I then he really is trapped him. because he's then going to have yeah. to play. But we've got an unhappy player. The problem being, when you've got an unhappy player, regardless of whether they come out publicly and say it, you will see that in their performances. I don't care this, what professionalism you've got, no, you are sure never going to play to that same level if you're not wanting to stay. I disagree, Shane, Sorry. because you've got the World Cup next year. Yeah. So yeah, that, he's not going to want to jeopardise his place in the World I don't, Cup, I don't think, especially when you've got other youngsters now. Personally, I don't think that has any... Now. I don't think... Go on. Go on. Sorry. Sorry to I was just going to say, I don't think that he will want to jeopardise his place in the England World Cup squad just because there's, there's a lot of young, talented strikers that are coming up who could easily... Any England manager could be like, well, you haven't played enough, Kane. But we've got four or five youngsters here that are that are more than capable of putting a ball in the back of the net on the on the World Cups in the World Cup stage. We're, all, we're also forgetting we're also forgetting that uh, Son has two Son's not signed his contract yet, and he's got two years left on his deal. So the situation I'm more scared about is what Son's doing in the summer because there's with a two lot years of noise. left on his deal. If yeah. he doesn't sign it, if he does sign it, which again people have been saying it's imminent for the past six months now, so. I don't know what imminent means in, in terms of that, but if he does not sign a contract deal, which I don't know if there's any, I don't know. It depends how much he loves the club, really, because if I'm son, I'm not signing a new deal now, because if I sign a new deal, then I'm committing my the rest of my career to Tottenham. For me, if son doesn't sign a deal, then you're going to have to try and think about selling son. And I know that that sounds crazy to think about, but he's got a year less than Kane. So I, I, it, the situation could be really, 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 really bad before he gets good, and that, that's that's why I believe that Daniel Levy will not sell Kane at all this season because he still has to sort out this this son issue before Kane gets sorted out. And that's why the summer is going to be mad. This summer is going to be madness. It's going to be madness. It's, yeah, it is. And I kind of feel sorry for for son, uh, for son set, bon Saker for, to a certain degree because he's coming into a world of trouble here. Um, mm. 
can I actually even just touch back on um, Fonseca, right? Because I think what we've all said is we need to... Basically, we are in a rebuild and our two best players are potentially going out the door within the next kind of year, two years, latest. If Unless Sun signs a new deal, but if Kane's going, then I, I don't know whether he'll follow his kind of um, pursuit. I think potentially, realistically, why Fonseca is being brought in is because we weren't able to get these top names in. So it's a case of who can we bring in left? Who can we bring in still who is willing to join us? Because mm. you could say Gasparini or Gaultier, but Gaultier has gone to Nice now, has he? He's gone to Nice now, yeah. Yeah, so that's already a done deal. So he's off the table. You know, um, there's Gasparini, but he's staying at Atalanta. Why would he want to come yeah, from why, why would he to us? <laughs> doesn't make sense. They are also a good thing. Uh... Yeah, so I think when we look at, like, who do we have that would want to come to us, who can come to us, and will try and help us turn it around, I think Fonseca's still probably one of the best choices. Not the best, but mm. one of the better choices. Yeah. I think if you, even if you look at uh, Passos de Ferreri, took them from being relegation-threatened to Champions League in third place, and the next season when he moved to Porto, they got relegate. They got relegated. They finished dead last. Mm. They finished dead last. The most goals conceded, least goals scored, lowest points. Mm. You know, and I think that even Shakhtar, like I said before, they hadn't won the league title in two years. They hadn't won the cup in three years. He came in and won the double all three years. So I think, you know, Paratici has looked at him in his time at Italy and probably seen something in him and what he's done prior that could say, right, at least this guy can maybe come in. Potential man management. From, yeah, potential man management, but just stop us from coming in <laughs> and no. being on a massive, massive decline while while we're trying to rebuild. I think it's mm. maybe we aren't going to sign a top class manager now, but if we can just get this guy to maybe keep the ship afloat a little bit and then we can bring in someone. Um mm. Well, class, I don't we've, think we've got hands up in the house. We've got hands up in the house, and we'll have to go to Mr. Irish yeah. Hotspur. Go ahead. Look, Niran, you know I love you. I think you're a very, very intelligent guy. But I, honestly, I cannot buy into this. We couldn't get a top manager over the line if we didn't pump money into the new adventure on the Skywalk, right? If we'd not pumping money into getting planning permission and, uh, and build a new golf course, that money could have went to a new manager. We could have done it. We could have done it. We chose not to do it. And that's the problem. That is the problem. Daniel Levy has stopped us from getting in the top manager. A top manager. The guy's pockets is tighter than a duck's arse. Not that I know how tight that is, but you know it's tighter than a duck's arse. <laughs> and honestly, honestly, right? This is the problem. A new thing on a, a new adventure onto the Skywalk. We have, um, you know, planning permissions and uproar with Enfield Council at the minute about a golf course and everything else. Stop, cut that crap. Focus on the immediate situation, which is the team and the management situation. Get that in place. Get us into a position where we're challenging again. And then you can go and do your golf course. Then you can add the new adventure to the Skywalk. But use that money to put into a new manager. I'm sorry. I'm not buying into this crap that we, um, you know, that we can't get in a new uh, We couldn't get in a top class manager and everything else. Because if we concentrate on what we should be concentrating, first and foremost, which is a football club that plays football or supposedly tries to play football, well, then stop with all that side shit, put that money, money in, and we would have had a Conte, we would have had a Pochettino, we would have had a Tenai, we would have had a top manager. And this is the problem. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying into this stuff that, you know, he's the only guy that would have came in. We had top managers at the negotiation table. If we put the money in where it should be going, which is football first, then we wouldn't be in this situation right now. Kieran, what do you want to say? Yeah, can I just say, I think there's maybe a bit of, like, cross wires between what I'm saying and how you've taken it. I'm not saying... Well, I think Fonseca's good. We, you know, potentially could have got him because we never would have got Conte or anyone like that. If we could have got Ten Hag, Conte, Pochettino, any of these managers, I would have taken them over Fonseca in a heartbeat, you know, and I still would. But I think what I'm trying to say now is that, you know, that is something that we should have gone for, like you said. We should have committed to that and given Conte what he wanted, bringing someone like him. But what I'm saying is now you look at all these deals we've negotiated with these people and it's like, it seems like it's constantly not happening or they're just not willing to accept deal. And I'm saying like now, as in like right now today, what is out there? I'm not saying like what was out there at the beginning, because and, if that's what I'm, we're talking about, I agree I'm, 100% with you. I'm just I saying come like to that point. Today. Sorry, kid. I want to come to that and I want to ask all of you your opinions. If it's, let's say this doesn't happen for whatever reason, this Fonseca deal doesn't happen. 
Let's cross Conte off the list. Let's cross Poch off the list. Oh, Let's cross Ken Hag off the list. Because I don't believe any of them are coming. Of the rest of them that we're being talked about, we're being linked to, who the F is there left? Who would you want to see if it's not Fonseca? And I'm going to come to all of you. Mike first. You were last, last time. So you're first this time. Who would you want to see? I will put you forward. <laughs> I will, I will, and I, I, I promise you this. I will put your CV forward for the Tottenham job. You've got Thank the you. bat. You've, you, you've got the experience and knowledge. I'll put you in for it. I, I don't think you could probably do any worse than some of the names that have, that have been banded about outside the the sort of top five. I mean, yeah, I'll put your name forward for it. I, I, I honestly, outside the names that we've mentioned. Would anyone be happy with Graham Parr? Would anyone be happy with Scott Parker? Would anyone be happy with Ryan Mason? Ryan Mason, you got Zidane is still going around. Why are we mentioning names about Scott Parker and I, uh, I wouldn't take Zidane. I don't rate Zidane one bit. I don't rate Zidane. I actually don't rate him either. We'll let you all get a little say. Three Champions Leagues. That's yeah, Ronaldo, I'm just Ronaldo, mate. Yeah, you will have your say, Darius. I'll let um, David. I'll oh. come to you. Don't worry, you're going to get your say too, da Darius. You're next. Managers, oh god, um, it's painful. Louis, I think. Isn't it, I think N NG23 <laughs> had a comment about sort of you don't have to play all defensive football. You don't have to play completely attacking football. There's a balance that needs to be made, and the person who I look to and. And think that was the, the perfect balance was, was Thomas Tuchel. He found a system and it worked for Chelsea. Obviously, he had the plays and everything. For me, the, the manager that that reminds me similar to that and that can sort of play in in both styles of football is probably Christophe Gaultier. He's now gone to Nice, so it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But he seemed like he had a, a system that that worked. He played four four two, but it was they pressed they pressed in in triangles and they also defended very rigidly, and and that's why they won the league because they were so. So solid defensively. So if it was anybody, I would have probably gone for Gaultier. But again, there is there is genuinely no there is no manager out there for me that that can really apart from the, the three that I had mentioned and has gone. And that's why it makes you so angry because we were linked with all three of them: Ten Hag, Poch, and Conte. It doesn't really seem like any manager that can that can perfectly fit a bill for Tottenham. And unfortunately, we are now just left with with dross it, it, it is dross it's underwhelming but like Kieran said it's like what else i genuinely can't well, think of anything else i wouldn't could... i wouldn't say they're dross i'd say that what the key thing is they're inexperienced okay yeah Let, i'll take that back it's not dross but it's compared to who we were linked with compared to who we were linked with it's dr it's dross at the end of the yeah, day yeah. and somebody else made a comment earlier that apparently was only on 2.5 million euros a year so it's like when you add all these things up, it just seems like the cheaper option, a stopgap for somebody. And again, maybe that might be a good thing. Maybe not panicking and signing a manager who we think might be the right decision is is the better option and maybe waiting for a manager to come on the market in two years' time. I, I don't know. I, I, again, I don't know anymore with, with this team. So I've seen that Nuno is in talks with Everton, actually. I saw that comment just come up. I thought, I think I Nuno's to going to uh, Everton. Nuno, I've said it before, Nuno, oh, well, what about no, no. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Uh, Kieran, Kieran, I'll come to you. Who's who's your inspiration if if it's not uh, Fonseca? I, I would have gone for Gaultier. Like if he's if he's willing to go from winning the title to join Nice, he would have come to us. Um, some I think Danny's saying in chat that the talks have stalled between them, and if that's true, then I would probably still go in for him. Um, yeah, like. Yeah, I don't know, to be honest. It's not like you guys were saying earlier. There's there's uh, the top managers and then there's everyone else is just kind of a big mix um, mm. beneath. I'd probably take Gaultier. Um, I wouldn't take Zidane, though. I think he's more, he manages big players. Like, if you look since Ronaldo's left, what have Madrid really done? You know, they haven't really done anything. I think that's kind of his fault. And, and he in that squad as well. He sold yeah. a lot of good players. Well, as well, team, if you were talking about context for, just so, sorry, quickly, if we're talking about um, context for Fonseca and what happened at Roma, why not talk about context and what happened to Zidane at Real Madrid? They don't have the money, they're broke. So if you're going to put context in the situation, put context in the situation but, for everybody. But and be so they're still spending 150 million yeah. on Hazard. That's the problem. Yeah. They're at fault for their reason because they wanted they, they sold players. Yeah, but that's an hand like, spot though. You 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 made you made this excuse for Fonseca earlier on. So if you like, if you want to use context for Fonseca, use context for Zidane. 
Remember, that's what I mean. Zidane, Zidane, Zidane got rid of Hakimi. Zidane got rid of Hakimi. Zidane got rid of Reguilón. He didn't want to play those players. He sent Odegaard on loan. So at the end of the day, Zidane kept to the old guard that he he yeah. trusted. And at the end of the day, they didn't back him because they were getting old. And that's why I've got a problem with Zidane because he could have developed that squad into a decent squad. They've got good players in that Real Madrid squad. Do not get it twisted. But he wanted to rely on that old guard to the point where they let him down. And now at the end of the day, he's put all he sold all these players on loan. They was let him down. Odegaard he's sent on loan. And now. He's in a situation where he's left because they haven't won anything. So I, I understand what you mean, David. Context They're still looking to sell Odegaard well. now today. I'm so it's not, that's not on Zidane. They're still looking to sell Odegaard today. I'm just going to be... The likes of Hakimi. They had Carvial at right back. He's never going to get in. The kid was only 18. You know what I mean? Regular. Mm. Let, mm. Let's be honest. He's great going forward. But is he as defensively as sound as, as, as Zidane Maybe. would like at Real Madrid? No, no, it's not Madrid's level. So you can argue that he got that right. Late. I'm going to come to you then. I want your thoughts then as, as, as to... If it's not Fonseca, who who do you want to see in? Uh, me, look, there's Sedan. You go, you go, you go all out for Brendan Rodgers from um, 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 Leicester. Um, you know, uh, Gold here. If that if that deal is stalled, you can go for him. We could have also um, ran Car Carlo Ancelotti and try and brought him in from everything. There's a lot of options we could have done. There's still a lot of options out there. La Patagri from Sevilla. There's still a lot of options out there. Mm. You know, honestly, Fonseca, it's so underwhelming and so disappointing. You know, this idea and this notion that there's still not great managers out there, I'm not buying into either. But the Sevilla manager, haven't the Sevilla just got into um, uh, Champions like League? Second, yeah. yeah. So why they, he's not going to leave that? Why would he? He'd be he'd be mad in my it's the, eyes. It's the, it's the ambition, though, isn't it? Like you said, it's not the fact that it's the fact that they don't want to pay a compensation for you or any of that. That that's my issue. It's sort of like Look, for we're at a stage in football where money speaks. You put money the money, speaks. you will get money anybody. Talks. Money talks in football nowadays, and this is what people need to wake up and realize. Money talks. You put the money on the table, you will get anybody you want. Money, my, I, I agree with that, David. I think if, if you put, if you slap twenty million in front of someone like Conte, regardless of what he says in the press, he's coming to Spurs because he's not going to get that sort of money. Because it, it does all it means is he'll do the six months, and it can be proven. He said, "Well, look, Jose came and he couldn't do nothing. I, I tried the same yeah. thing. I couldn't do nothing. I'll move on." And the next place he would then go to, you get a payoff, and you'll probably do really well because he is a top level manager. But he's a top level manager that does rely on having a number of pound coins given to him to exploit that into the transfer market. And I don't see that happening. I want to come to Shai in your comment in terms of who you would like to see if it's not going to be um, our friend or your brother, should I say, Fonseca. <laughs> well, you know what? I was kind of thinking I'd, I'd go with the double act of Darius and David, to be honest with you. I, think, Mate, you know, I, I, would, I would love that. I, I would think, absolutely I think love that. Be, be good good cop, bad cop. And I think David would be a great motivational speaker in the changing room. <laughs> Uh, Definitely, I think David like hands, David hands them out, and I'll just so I'll, I'll console them. I'm on the back. So That's many asses in that changing room, boy. They're getting <laughs> slapped up proper. I'll, 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 I'll get on the phone. I'll get on the phone to leave you. Don't worry, we'll sort that out. We'll sort Darius that out. Yeah, David are doing that as a combination. That's lethal. That's lethal. Right there. Go on, carry on, carry on. No, I'll be honest with you. I I'm not sure. I'm really not sure with the availability of certain players. I mean, yes. Eddie Howe? No. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Howe's got more experience in the league than flipping Fonseca, so it's like <sighs> that, is, that is true. But no, I mean, I'm, I always said Eddie Howe, Gareth Southgate would not do it for me for Spurs no. personally. No. Um, tell you what, Gaultier wouldn't have been a bad shout to be fair, considering what he's done. That, that wouldn't have been a bad shout, a bad shout. But other than so, that, I, I've got to be honest. I, I'm not really not sure, Sam. I'm really not. Ed, sure. Ed, Ed, Ed M here watching. Thank you for watching, Ed. Marcelo Glado was always my first bit of a manager out of a job. I'd probably have picked Rudy Garcia. Oh, mm. He's actually on Rudy Garcia, wasn't he? I'm not sure about that one, but it's like for a second yeah. to me that one. I'll just go through a couple of these comments here because we've had loads of comments coming through. Apologies about it. I was never going to be able to read all of them out, but I'm going to try my best to read some of them out. Uh, the thing is, you the thing is, Levy usually intensely screws things up. Guys, Gaultier has not signed for Nice. Talks have stalled. So, again, mm. another rabbit could come out of the hat. Uh, Fonseca, only 2.5 million per year for Fonseca is getting. It seems to me like Paratissi is not... Con I, know, I can't even say his name anymore. I'll forget it. Whatever. <laughs> is convinced. Plus two years of Fonseca. You must be thinking I'm here till Poch is free. And again, with cynics, we would say that. Um, so more comments here. People agreeing with each other. I think Gaultier's football is so easily worked out. Oh. So this is a very, it's a very broad brush. 
Uh, One Touch TV, thank you for watching Nigerian Englishman. Look, you need to rebuild. Poch got you the most out of your squad. They are maxed out. You need a new cycle. You should go for the Norwich manager and he can bring in a couple of his players with him. What, that Fout? What's his name? <laughs> Fout okay. He's a Nuna. He's a Nuna. He's just calling. You, can, you know what? Don't give him a time of day. Don't give him a time of day. You know what we're going to do, don't you? We're going to say to you, one touch. Oh, you can fuck off. You can fuck off, <laughs> mate. You can fuck off. Surely. Not having none of that. Not having no trolls like that on here. Come on. That's just Especially from a... <laughs> Wait, um, did, Watford get, did Watford get promoted? I'm not... I can't remember if they did. Yeah, they did. Uh, they did get promoted. Uh, okay, yeah, cool. They, they so we'll, we'll be playing Danny Rose next season. That's great, oh, isn't I it? I love it. Oh, this is going to be great then, isn't it? Ben Foster's uh, going to have his little camera in goal when they beat us as well, doing match day vlogs. Yeah. I never <laughs> see strings. Oh, no. I'm going to come, I'm gonna, because we're going to wrap this up, I want to come quickly, just a, just a, a, bit, a bit of a sentence. Um, I know we've kind of touched on it already, but just to end the show, um, I'll start with you, Mike. Um, Fonseca, yes or no? Ah. <sighs> I'm, oh man, what a question this is! <laughs> I do it all the time. This is what I'm, I'm here for. Out what you mean this is what I'm here for. What do you expect? I want to say uh, he's not in yet, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just. Oh, I don't even know. No, I'm going no because he's not in yet. So hopefully no. I'm uninspired. Okay, okay, Darius. But, um, <laughs> no. Um, let, let's be honest. Like, if if you had said <laughs> start of the window or when. Jose yeah. got sacked. Paulo Fonseca, like David said, a lot of would a lot of us would have gone. Who, mate? Paulo Fonseca. So I, I can't be a hypocrite after watching a couple videos on YouTube and compilations say that yeah, he's the right guy for Spurs. So he's not, but I will I will give him a chance, and yeah. I will probably enjoy watching the football more. But how far does that go when you've got moon boots at the back still? So yeah, <laughs> hopefully Roma buy him. Kieran. Bought Xhaka, they bought Xhaka, so I've got hope. <laughs> Fonseca, True. yes yes or no? Uh, Going to give a quick, long-winded answer. Is it the best <laughs> manager good. we can we could have brought in? No. Is he the best manager we can bring in? No. But, it, uh, yeah, I'd probably say no, because there are still better options out there. But if he came in, I'm still going to back him. And I think we'd probably be a little bit happier seeing a bit better football. But like Darius said, that only goes so far. And I think the main priority is more rebuilding and getting out players and getting better ones in okay there it is um david <laughs> i think i know what the answer is but anyway i'm still gonna answer the same question i'm still gonna have to ask it yeah is it is it a yes or no from you <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to say, Darius, send me on them YouTube links. It looks like I'm going to have to get used to the idea, but no. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I'm taking it as a no then, David, from you. It's a no from you. Oh, it's a big fat no. Yeah, yeah. It couldn't be any louder. It's a big fat no from David, as they do on the old um, X Factor, whatever shows they do where they say no's to people. Uh, Shy, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I'll I tell you what. Me and Darius think a of- I like I have to say because most of the time he says it and then it's like oh yeah I thought that too <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna have to go yeah with Darius or I think no but you've got to give the guy a chance and and hope for the best that's that's all I can say really on it like I said we we that's had a year of Jose do. 18 months of Jose football I'm not gonna say that he, he yeah, did he I, did get done dirty at the end of the year and he could have won us a trophy if he brings but, I don't know yeah. I'm not gonna say anything else I'm not can gonna I, say anything if, else can I just quickly touch back. on that if he brings back our style of our, like our, our identity of attack and football, then that's it, it, he's halfway there. Listen, well, do you know what I was going to say? I think on, if you. we got Skriniar in in that January window when we were crying out for a centre back, mm. we wouldn't even be in this position in the first place. Yeah, and now true. we've sacked Jose. Now we haven't landed Conte or any of these other big managers, and we're staring at Fonseca, who yeah, he's going to bring us attack and football potentially. He might be halfway there already, but the common denominator there is. Levy and I th- like and I'm not yeah look, I'm not trying to push necessarily oh Levy out right but he is the common denominator between all of those if managers were backed and we went all out for these managers we wouldn't be sitting here complaining about Fonseca and so I think Paratician is a massive thing if he is actually going to get football incisions because maybe he'll just be told this is your budget. And it's just a case of Daniel Levy signing off on 
on players after that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But um, yeah. Ap- apologies. Wasn't laughing at you. He was laughing at this comment. No, no, I know, I know. Yeah. He's, done his, he's, he's making oh, yeah. me laugh. Eighteen months of free flowing losing football. Uh, <laughs> Potentially, oh, <let's> <laughs> is the seatbelt the seatbelt still in? I'm not even taking yeah, the seatbelt off from the Jose days. The seatbelt's uh, still on. We, we're doing all of this, and he's not signed. And this is the this is what I'm saying. I don't know whether or not. The Spurs hierarchy are doing this purposely to actually see what sort of comments are coming from the fan base because it seems to be that they're very reactive now to to what the fans are saying, particularly online and stuff. So if this guy was going to sign and it's all night, why hasn't he not signed yet? You know, I don't see what the problem is. Exactly, especially when he says, "Oh yeah, it's ninety nine percent done." Well, that one percent getting over the line is taking a hell of a long time, isn't it? It's taking a hell of a long time, and to me, that's that does give some sort of doubt as to whether or not. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. But why why not why not make the announcement now? We've been told we want to get it done before the Euros. We've been told we want to get it as soon as possible. It's been fifty odd days since Jose was sat. We need to get a manager in. We need someone who's preparing for um preseason. We need him to get involved in the club, know the club, know the players that he's got to work with, start thinking about transfers. All of this shit and he's not actually in a job yet, yeah. we're still surmising. Which doesn't well, make when's sense the first me. when's the first preseason game? Is it oh, ten weeks? No idea. No, no idea. No, it's probably ended it's not that long. Or... Or it could be earlier than that. It's, it's not going to be ten weeks. July. Uh, what are we now? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's got to be sometime Mid- in July. So July is yeah, going to be like July. three weeks away. So do you know what I mean? There's there's a lot of work to be done. Is, this, exactly. is season being delayed, or is it is it still kicking off at the same time? Because we've got the World Cup August. in the week. Fourteenth of August. Fourteenth of August. It starts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, breaking news from Brian Daigle. In less than eighteen months, we'll be talking about the hunt for another new manager. <laughs> Echo Spurs, well done, Paxton Road TV. Great show. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button, everybody. Please hit that like button if you're watching. Thank you very much. Well, Just the last JP. few comments here. Levy must be trolling us. No one can be that incompetent. Oh, yes, he can. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can't interrupt Levy's holiday seeing Uncle Joe, can we? Because he's on holiday in the Bahamas at the moment, I believe those two are. Uh, at Brian Daigle, you're. <laughs> You're giving it that long. So people are not inspired. We can obviously see that this is not currently an inspirational choice. But I, I'm, I'm with the same thing that Darius has said. I'm going to back this manager for as long as he needs to be back. But I want to yeah. see. I want to see a little bit more information coming out of the club. What is it we're looking to do? Who are we looking to bring in? What style of football we're looking to play? Can we do this style of football with the players we've got? Who's going out? Is Harry Kane staying? There's so many answers. There's so many questions, but we need answers for. I just don't know whether we're going to get all these answers in the next few weeks. And it might play out over a period of time. It's whether or not we're going to be patient enough for this to play out. Sam, the answers are already already kind of there because he's only getting a two-year contract. It's not a rebuild. Because if it's a rebuild and you you fully commit to the rebuild and you give him time to implement his attacking style of uh, football, you know. So okay, we bring in players from this season. He's st- it's it's not going to fix the problems at Tottenham. It's not going to be able to be exactly the way he wants to play. We're going to have to give him another transfer window after that. But but then he's one year left on his contract. So it's not re- the answers are already there in my opinion. Well, it's actually a three year contract, but the third year is optional. No, it's two by years. The it's an option yeah. for Spurs to trigger it after the third. Yeah. So I think or that's the I- second year. But what I'm trying to say is I think that's a way of them going, it's three years if we want it, but if it isn't working out because it's gone tits up, we're paying less. It's another kind of levy one, those cheaping out on the contract. You know, if you have no, to No, I get that, but it's less. not exactly inspiring though for the manager though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. 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 No, I don't, yeah. Like I don't if you're the manager, like if you put yourself in Fonseca's position, you would rather the five-year contract knowing that they're going to commit to your way and over the five years, you know, as long as there's progress season on season, that they're going to keep backing you and keep helping you do what you need to do. But when it's a two-year contract, he's trying to do he's trying to minimize everything within two years. So does he go balls deep at the start and fuck it up, or does he do it gradually? This is the team. They're not exactly giving him a chance to shine either right now. So in my opinion, I, I think the answers are already there. If they're only giving him a two-year contract with an option of see how it goes and we'll extend it for another year, they're not exactly inspired by it either, are they? You know what will happen after this show? Will there be a new manager? There's a talk to talk to talk to break out. I just know who I want. I've already got my management team. They're on the panel here. David Dallas combination. That's got to be for me. Every Saturday we've done a show. The following day, it's been a new manager. We've talks are broken down, and we've gone in for another manager. That's what will happen after this. 
So sorted anyway. We're, we're, we're there or thereabouts. Um, guys who are watching out there, thank you for watching. Really, really appreciate it. I do apologize if there was some uh, interruptions in the stream during this uh, live stream. But as it's live, these things can happen. But I hope it didn't spoil your viewing of the show. It's been a really, really good show. Thank you very much for all your comments. It's been absolutely fantastic. I apologize if I didn't get to everybody's because they were just like appearing out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere. And they're still appearing. I'm just going to just come to the last few before we say goodbye. Uh, so we've got Levy will select himself as manager. <laughs> uh, don't think we can end the show without having Mr. Bagel on. Then do you know what you go over here, AZP, and let's do it. We can take his yacht, signs a club uh, to us, and then we change everything. So they, they want to kidnap Levy and basically do away with him. That's what they not want to do. Danny involved. I'm sure they'll find him. If they can find him, Mr. Levy, I would stay in hiding if I were you, because these lot are going to take you out with professional hitmen. Uh, guys, Mike Hotspur Hustler, Darius, Kieran, the Irish Hotspur, and Shy, thank you very, very much. It's been absolutely welcome, fantastic. Wow. Um, I will say let's do this again, but I don't know if I've got the energy to do this again. <laughs> I really don't know if I can do this again. This has been like really draining, but it's been That's a really good effect. Joke. This That's is the Tottenham, Tottenham effect. effect. It, really is Tottenham effect. it really is the Tottenham effect. You're not lying there, <laughs> Kieran, at all. Um, but guys, at home, again, just last thing again, thank you all very much for watching. Leave comments after the show as well, and just keep, keep sharing, keep subscribing. These guys as well, sorry, I should come down to you, Fair. I'm not going to do that without, I'm going to do that before we go. Uh, Kieran, let's start with you. Where can people find you? Yeah, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Let's underscore Talk Spurs, or you can find me on YouTube at Let's Talk Spurs. Um, I won't take too much time up because I know the Euro is just about to start, so I'll let David exactly. or whoever else promote the channel now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Irish Hotspur. I'm going to call you Mr. Irish Hotspur, as Sid did when he started the show. <laughs> Mr. Irish Hotspur is your new name for me now. Where can people find you? Uh, yeah, the Irish Hotspur on YouTube. Um, I have a show coming out at three. Uh, I think I'm going to move it to half three now. It's um, the Irish Hotspur on Jack's, um, you know, guide to the Euros. So we're going to do be doing a bit of Euro content, back to Spurs content tomorrow. Um, you can catch me on a watch along and we are Tottenham TV later on at eight o'clock um, for the Belgium and Russia game. I just want to say, everyone, get over to, to Kieran. Show him the same support and the love that you've showed, um, you know, myself. Um, Tottenham away, Paxton Road. Get over and help Kieran. Get over. Make sure you smash and subscribe on his channel and help him along his way. But also, Paxton, you know, you guys know, you know, I love coming on this channel. It's <laughs> always good banter. We're always sitting here with smiles. And everybody, I can't stress this enough. Smash that like on Paxton Road TV. It's a great channel. I always have great fun coming on here. That's why whenever they ask me, I'm always straight away here. I love it. <laughs> and also, of course, Chai from Cotton Away, Brian Daigle in the comments, great representatives for the channel. Make sure you smash and subscribe on them. And then after that, if your fingers aren't too tired, you know, come over and help me on the journey to 4K and smash that subscribe button. There we go. Oh, like man. I said, promotion for Baby. everybody. He brings everybody in. That's my, that's my assistant manager right there. That's yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 who said you're, who said you're, you're going to be managing? I thought David was oh, on your No, no, it's a co-partnership. Assistant oh, is in co-partnership. Yeah, right, co-manager. Okay. Co-manager. Co-manager. Co co <laughs> I'm going to come to Shai. Where can people find you? All right. I hope you don't mind this because I, I've got to do this because this was hilarious last night. Um, yeah, so Tottenham away on YouTube. Um, last night we did a show on Fonseca, actually. And um, if you could watch that show from last night and go to two hours, 20 minutes, 45 seconds, I believe, because I watched it that many times now since last night, you will see uh, Stell call Will Stewart, um, Will Smith, by accident and then um will, Sh will stewart then turns into a rapper and starts rapping nursery rhymes which is absolutely hilarious so if you get a chance to go and watch that later 2 20 45 shy 2 20 45 right two, oh, two hours 45 uh, no so two hours 20 45 seconds yeah got that um, oh, I'm gonna have it's a look the here. funniest yeah. thing you have ever seen it is absolutely hilarious will, go will check stewart, that out. nursery rhyme rapping fantastic <laughs> Go and check that out, everybody who's watching. Uh, <laughs> it's been really good. Thank you again. Uh, guys, it's been fantastic. We will do this again very soon. Um, we're going to be out then. So take care. Enjoy the Euros. <laughs>